am going to show now the second uh, architect from a contemporary architect from uh, Bangladesh, Rafik Azam. And I think you'll uh, you'll uh, you'll be you'll like uh, his work. He's younger and he's contemporary, and uh, this is the man. <laughs> I mean, I look at his white socks. Uh, somebody told me, a lady in the United States, that uh, you know, all men with, who who wear white socks is are kind of childish. They they uh, they still have a great great attachment to their mothers. Well, it was said, as you probably know, that architects, great architects, important architects, first build for their mothers. Uh, Le Corbusier did, uh, um, uh, Frank Leroy did, uh, Venturi did, and maybe uh, Azam did too, Rafik Azam. But his wild socks, uh, I, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, not notice them. Anyway. He is an interesting architect and very successful. And you'll see uh, in what uh, sense I, I use the word successful. He wanted to study first painting. Uh, and um, like Jean Nouvel, who also went, wanted first to study painting and then uh, became an architect because Jean Nouvel was not accepted in the Beaux-Arts school. And I don't know about Azam. So he's a graduate from Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology in 1989. His practice, uh, Shatoto uh, Architecture for Green Living, was established in May 1995. So his uh, practice is now 25 years old, 26. Uh, we look first at this residence by this uh, architecture office called Shatoto, which is his. And um, yeah, it is a, an opulent uh, building, uh, a lot of concrete. Uh, he tries to soften that, that concrete with, uh, with a lot of vegetation. And he often uses uh, 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 pools. So water is always in the vicinity of concrete and, and vegetation. There is also hidden in the shadow of Mercedes the what can we do? Uh, inequalities exist uh, all over the world. Uh, I personally am not happy with this. But what can you do? There are rich people and there are people who are not rich. And it, it, has, it has been like this uh, even in communism, as you well know. But the building is, is, is fine, is, is a good building. The only thing that, that, that saddens me a little bit is that this kind of opulence, and we are going to see other pictures, does not belong to many other people. Uh, so um, my egalitarian spirit is a little bit uh, saddened by this. Yes, this is a building uh, for someone who uh, didn't probably look uh, uh, scared at his uh, bank account. It's, it's, it's a large building in, in, in the city and uh, you know various levels. Look at this. Look at this uh, pool, uh, which is not on the ground level. Uh, I mean, uh, personally, I think that his architecture is fine, but but and the idea to bring water uh, in uh, in an intimate uh, connection with a building is a fine idea. Uh, the, the 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 proximity. Uh, between uh, water and, and, and buildings is, I think, a good one. But for some reason, uh, the way he does these pools uh, disappoints me a little bit because for, uh, in opposition to the way he uses the green, meaning the, 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 you know, the bushes and everything we see here green, it's so free and so discreet at the same time. It's abundant, but also discreet somehow. It's a, it's a nice uh, conversation between nature and the geometry of the building. I think, I mean, I don't know if he worked with a landscape architect or not. If he did, uh, all the applause is for the landscape architect. If he did uh, this, uh, uh, you know, by his instincts uh, 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 as an architect, I, I think he deserves the applause. I truly admire the way he uh, he uses um, uh, green, uh, the greenery of nature, 
without domesticating it too much. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I said this before, and I will say it again, I think we need nature to be uh, uh, almost as free as possible. But the swimming pools or the, 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 the pool, in my opinion, is a little bit too, uh, we'll arrive at pictures with it, a little bit too contrived, too controlled, too clean and too geometrical. Otherwise, the building is fine. The fence, the, the, the you know, of course, uh, here the, the 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 owner doesn't seem to care too much about the, you know, rather opulent uh, usage of uh, electrical uh, energy. The the bulbs are uh, uh, quite active. Um, what can we say? Uh, we have now. We are confronted with. Uh, uh, climate change and with uh, issues of sustainability and all kinds of problems, perhaps we should use less, even electrical energy, because all of these uh, excesses uh, uh, affect affect uh, um, our life in the present. It's a big house, as I said. It's an opulent house. The concrete is 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 finely, uh, you know, uh, built. Um, maybe not as uh, impressively as in the case of Tadao Ando, but uh, impressively enough. And um, uh, so, you know, it, it's a building that says, uh, look, uh, you know, we look forward towards the future with, uh, conf with confidence because, uh, because we can, but, there, uh, but uh, uh, I, I have some hesitancies. Again, because I think the, the excesses of the rich uh, uh, are, are to be tempered. Otherwise, the discrepancies between the very poor, I mean, in, in Bangladesh, even in Dhaka, there are people who work without shoes and with animals on the roads. And you would expect this kind of villa in, uh, you know, in, in, in Hollywood, in, uh, in Palm Springs, or who knows where, in East Hampton, New York. But in Bangladesh, is I think it's a little bit offensive, offensive for the other people. I mean, look at this pool. You know, it's 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 perfect. But uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, it irritates me a little bit this perfection because it neglects uh, it neglects the realities of, of of what is outside of this house. Um, so. I know that the architect is uh, an accomplice of, uh, of those in power uh, and those who are rich, um, but um, uh, I, I cannot easily accept this, um, this situation and uh, uh, look at that, uh, maybe the child of the owner or I don't know, or the owner himself is hard to see from here. Kind of sadly alone in that glorious uh, pool of his, you know, anyway. I express some ideas. Some people might uh, might uh, think and uh, feel differently, um, but all in all, I think his architecture being fine, uh, and and uh, I, I love the, the the way he uses vegetation. I am less impressed by the way he uses water. Uh, I, I I I once had a chance to 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 be in a in a Muslim uh, garden. Uh, an Islamic garden in Spain, and I was fascinated by uh, the incredible sensitivity um, of the Arabs to to understand water. There were thin uh, uh, channels of water and little springs, and it was just as a symphonic work with water. I don't see here a lot of sensitivity vis-a-vis -vis water. It's just a large uh, pool that is rather. Uh, I, I, I think is a little bit arrogant. And it shouldn't be because water uh, should never be considered as, as being arrogant, but it's not the, the, the mistake, the deficiency of water, but is the deficiency, I think, of the architect. Strangely, because he is a sensitive architect. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, I don't think he understands water very well. But otherwise, he is a very skillful architect, and I particularly like the way he uh, brings nature uh, in, in, into his architecture. And we'll see other examples. I also like very much this sketch by him. 
uh, it's almost like uh, by a great uh, master of uh, ancient old times in, in China or Japan. It's, it's, it's very well done, I think. Uh, um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, we'll see some more recent drawings, architectural sketches, in my opinion, less graceful, less poetical. Um, so these are the drawings uh, of, of, of the building we just saw. Uh, you see, there are there four floors, and they, I mean, this is not a building for everybody. Another residence by Chateauto. Uh, again, the, the ample uh, uh, pool, uh, which probably is, is beneficial to the, to, the, to the temperature in the building because it, it, it refreshes the air. But it also takes care. Takes uh, it needs uh, uh, care. You know, look, uh, the water is at the level of, uh, of the entrance into the building, or at the level of the of the of the floor. Again, a very opulent house. It could have been an institution here, an office or something. It's just a villa for one of those people who were born under a lucky star. Uh, I wonder what they feel when they get out of their palace and they walk on the streets that don't even have asphalt and they see people who with animals and without shoes. I wonder what they feel. Do they feel good about themselves? I wouldn't in their place. I would feel ashamed. But uh, I'm probably uh, most surely naive uh, and unacceptably idealistic. Um, he claims his architecture is green, as you saw from the beginning, and it's true. He brings the 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 the, 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 the green world into the building uh, convincingly, but less convincingly might be the 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 the, the 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 vastness of the spaces he creates with vast surfaces and, uh, of, of of concrete. The concrete is not a sustainable material. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright protested against the concrete. He didn't like concrete at all. He called it a conglomerate. He did use it uh, sometimes a little bit, just a little bit. But I understand, I think, uh, why Frank Lloyd Wright didn't like concrete. Although I like it, aesthetically, I like it. I like even brutalist architecture very much. And we are going to see some buildings by Le Corbusier in concrete in India. This, uh, this again, this is a house. It's a residence, but it could have been, a, you know, a, an institutional building, a cultural center, a, an office, a, even a small museum or a school or a, anyway. Again, I, I wonder what the owners of this house uh, feel when they leave the house and see very different realities on the street. Um, in a way, it's sad. So I, 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 I actually think an architect should not be indifferent to these social discrepancies, although it's true, architects uh, always uh, work by necessity for those uh, in uh, in power and rich, you know, Palladio would not have would not have built if he built for the if he had to build for 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 those who didn't have power and didn't have authority and didn't have money. Uh, but uh, I still dream of a world where the the differences between the very rich and the very poor are attenuated, are are are, 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 are diluted. Uh, it's probably a dream and probably it will never happen. Um, yeah, that's why capitalism is so so-called successful, because it addresses in a way the beast in human beings. You know, uh, uh, an ideology which which claims that to make a profit is moral and not to make a profit is immoral. Uh, in my opinion, it's a sick ideology, but this is the ideology of capitalism. Uh, and even China, which was communistic, uh, Rem Kolhas in a conference I attended, uh, this was uh, in, in the early 90s, he said there were huge signs on the, on the side of the, of the highways in China at that time, 
with uh, banners, with, uh, with uh, words, to get rich is glorious. And they did get rich, but I don't know if it's so glorious. Um, anyway, um, so this, I mean, look at this uh, so-called residence. It could have been, as I said, very well a museum or uh, I don't know, some kind of an office. It's huge. And it's in the center of the, it's in the, you know, it's in, within the city. Uh, it's not like uh, the rural villas of Palladio outside of Vicenza or whatever. Uh, this is, this eats up a lot of land, a lot of space within the city. The very same city where some people probably, probably don't even have a room, one single little room at their disposal. Here we see a, like a composite drawing of the architect with some uh, notations and uh, you see the, the ample uh, pool there, uh, in my opinion, a little bit too ample, but uh, the, again, the proximity of the water uh, does good to, to, to the building. And this is the, I imagine this is the owner or something is connected with the building. I found this, uh, this um, sketch and uh, I, I like it. I mean, it shows culture, it shows, uh, you know, the past, uh, it, it, it shows uh, even uh, something of a spiritual nature. So it makes me uh, fantasize that uh, somehow the building uh, in some way uh, had a, um, you know, a, a more sensitive program, but uh, its opulence, in my opinion, is a little bit uh, antithetical to, to that. Now, this is a mosque uh, by Shatoto, and it's very well done, with one exception, and uh, we'll arrive at it. The text description of the architects located at the ascent to the, this graveyard in uh, the city. The mayor, uh, Mohammed Hanif uh, Mosque, is a threshold space threshold space, uh, I wonder what that means, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, inspired by the Azam Shah Mosque built by the Mughals in the, um, that fort. The new design is a departure from traditional mosques in both physical and philosophical designs, combining all the new ideas into a contemporary concept. A key feature derived from the Mughal Mosque was the Shan, an extended terrace attached to the entrance of the main hall. The shan provides additional prayer space when the interior is full, but otherwise acts as a social hub for the community. Since it borders Anzimpur Road on the south and Anzimpur Graveyard on the north, the mosque acts as a transitional space between the terrestrial and the celestial, where the shan is the veil between the realms. I like this word very much, the veil, and the veil between the realms, and the transitional space between the terrestrial and the celestial. This makes me think of what uh, uh, Jeme Cantacuzino said, that the architect is supposed to uh, serve uh, man and, and his gods. And so if we can somehow address both the terrestrial and the celestial, in as many buildings as we can, I think we do something positive. Anyway, the main hall is a large, sorry for this kind of uh, long text, is a large open space held up by cement columns with trunks that expand into canopies which hold up the slabs above. And here is the problem with the, with the building and I, will, uh, I will, will arrive there. Creating an indoor forest. Windows along the north and east walls flood the room with daylight while the perforated brick wall on the south filters light and noise coming from the road. Floor lights are organized in Qatar lines. I don't know what this means, Qatar lines to indicate where to stand during prayer and alongside ring lights attached to the columns provide unobtrusive and ambient lighting. Now you see these columns, they irritate me and I can tell why, I can say why. They are in a way caricatures of the columns, the mushroom columns that Frank Lloyd Wright built at the Johnson Wax uh, building in Wisconsin. And strangely, even Toyo Ito did something that uh, was, did the same. Uh, and to me, it's actually very surprising that such a very well-educated and sensitive architects 
uh, um, are not afraid of, 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 of the possible, uh, um, you know, accusation that, that I mean, the, 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 the similarity is just too, too, too obvious. And uh, unfortunately, the, the, the columns here do not have the nobility, the slenderness, uh, the, the, the proportions of, and the design of those done by, by uh, Wright. You could say maybe one could say it's just a coincidence. I don't know. And if it is a coincidence, it's an unfortunate coincidence. Otherwise, the building towards the outside is fine. Again, brick, again, a kind of an architecture that seems to be at home in Bangladesh. And uh, it, it makes us think also of, uh, of uh, Mr. Islam, whose work we saw earlier. So there is a connection. In fact, uh, uh, this contemporary architect uh, was, uh, was influenced by, uh, by Islam. Now you see the people on the on the road, the ones that I mentioned, you know, with tricycles, with bicycles. There are also often also animals. Now think about that very opulent concrete uh, building, uh, you know, uh, being uh, you know too far away from uh, from uh, such uh, uh, you know uh, urban uh, realities. This is the, the mosque, and I think it's a fine architecture. It is rectangular, but uh, the, the brickwork is sensitive and it's fine. And even the, the small portions with um, vegetation are, are uh, uh, appropriately uh, adorning uh, the building. As I said, uh, the, the only thing that disturbs me are these columns. Uh, you know, the capital is, uh, is, is too big, is too large, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the column itself seems to be too short. It's something a little bit, I think, for my taste, and I am subjective, I could be wrong, but my taste tells me that uh, they could have been done better. Otherwise, such, uh, oasis, or such an oasis of, of, of calmness is, is, is welcomed even in a mosque. And, uh, you know, it's not no wonder that that gentleman is uh, maybe contemplating, thinking or praying in the vicinity of the pool. Uh, otherwise, here it looks kind of too official, too big. It could have been a university here. Again, those columns that uh, uh, mushroom columns, uh, which in my opinion are not very inspired. You see the, lots of people without shoes. And I think it's fine to work without shoes. Uh, uh, it's just that working without shoes and uh, stepping into a Mercedes and um, stepping out of a huge concrete building might be a, a little bit uh, somehow uh, you know, contradictory, but maybe I am too conventional in my thinking. Why not? Why not step out of a glorious villa, almost a palace, uh, and then step in in your know, glorious car, uh, having no shoes. After all, even David Bowie, who had plenty of money, well, he did have shoes just before he died, but he didn't have socks. He didn't like socks. And uh, Einstein also didn't like socks. Uh, and I, I think I understand why they didn't like socks. Socks are really a, a pain in the, in the neck or somewhere else. Uh, because I don't know about you, but for me, I, I, I never, I'm never able to find two socks of the same color. It, you know, it, it's just impossible for me. I find a black one, a blue one. Uh, you know, I, I cannot find a pair. It's impossible. The solution is, of course, to have all the socks the same color. That is a solution, and I will think about it. But even Kenneth Frampton told me once, many years ago, when I. Uh, uh, I used to have a friendly relationship with him when I lived in New York. And once we had, we, we met at a restaurant and he told me that when he was a child, he used to wear uh, thick uh, woolen socks embroidered by his grandmother. But that once he was uh, a mature man uh, in, in New York, he only had black, sophisticated, uh, simple uh, cotton uh, socks. Well, enough about the socks. We are back to the to the mosque. There are no relationships between socks and, and the mosque, but uh, 
although they kind of so sound similarly a little bit. The sock and the mosque, mosque uh, I, I could very easily uh, pronounce uh, wrongly uh, both. Anyway, um, I like this tower. It makes me think of the towers in San Gimignano uh, in Italy, the towers that uh, influenced and inspired Louis Kahn when he did the uh, um, Richard's laboratories in Philadelphia, the building that actually launched him as an international uh, uh, architect of, uh, of uh, great importance. So, you know, if you look from above, you might say uh, that I, you, you might not say that this building is a mosque. But I think uh, somehow the very fact that it's not trying to mimic a so-called religious building is a virtue, it's not a, it's not a, a deficiency. I don't know about this extensive usage of, of glass in a climate which is certainly hot. Uh, um, I don't think glass is such an appropriate, uh, but this it is a touch of so-called so, so uh, contemporary uh, design. But I find it a little bit problematic and a little bit commercial. He also uses these round uh, uh, openings into the slabs. We'll see it in, uh, in at least another case a little later. Um, so brick architecture, just like we saw in the case of uh, Islam, his predecessor, whom he admired very much, and I think he, uh, it was uh, a legitimate uh, admiration. You see how powerful such a simple tower can be? You know, it, it's just a tall prism uh, uh, made of brick, but I think it has it has vigor, it has power uh, as an architectural uh, entity. And it, almost by itself, just by itself, signifies something of, uh, that transcends in a way the terrestrial, you know, something spiritual, like the clock tower of a church. Or... In its silence, uh, this tower says there is something here that might not belong just to the you know, to the earth. Now, of course, uh, we see here a van emerging from uh, the belly of the building. Uh, again, what can we do? We are in the 21st century. Even a, a mosque has a van uh, emerging from the belly, uh, from its belly, as probably many vans will emerge from the belly of the Cathedral Aniamului, the cathedral of the people, so to speak, in Bucharest which has probably a very vast, ample uh, parking underneath it. All for the glory of God, of course. Uh, God and Pepsi, uh, because th those vans probably bring uh, uh, to the belly of the cathedral also Pepsi Cola and other indispensable uh, goodies of our time. Okay, enough with the sarcasm. Look at those cars, I mean, I don't understand what this man felt when I, I only now I notice in the section. I mean, those people are, are praying there and underneath we have that amphilad, that myriad of cars. It, it's incredible to me. I, I, I could have never done something like this. I, I, I know a, a sense of reality made him do this, but I, I find it so uh, <laughs> ludicrous, you know. Anyway contemporaneity. Apartments. It's a good apartment building, again, not for the, 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 the humble ones. It, it, they, are, they are good towers. It's good architecture. But uh, again, uh, it's probably for some kind of uh, yuppies of, uh, of Bangladesh, of Dhaka. This two apartment block is one of a kind. I mean, even this one of a kind irritates me, to be honest with you by Shatoto responding to the new building construction rules for DACA. 2006, such rules require a 50% mand mandatory free ground coverage and the maximum building height of 45 meters. 
uh, yes, they are good, but but this uh, attribute, one of a kind, uh, shows an elitism that uh, I think uh, someone who is a little bit wiser and a little bit more modest would not have used. Um, you might say, wait a minute, you are against uh, excellence, you are against... No, I'm not. I, in fact, I admire true excellence. But uh, an enfilade of vents and cars underneath the mosque, I cannot admire. I am very sorry. I mean, yes, imagine you pray and you hear the motor, the engine of the car starting, right? Oh, what kind of a praying that is? It's just... Uh, um, but then uh, the, the chapel, uh, uh, Notre Dame du Haut by Le Corbusier, the, the famous uh, Ronchamp, uh, there is an airport nearby and uh, the noise of the planes flying above the chapel is uh, sometimes unbearable. Anyway, modernity, what can we say? Look at this uh, affectation, you could say. It has some meaning sometimes, but what is the privilege of these people? Although I see one here too. Anyway, you might say that these holes in the slabs could represent some kind of a longing for the vertical connection with the, you know, with the sky, with the heavens, with the, with the divinity above, maybe. Anyway. What do we read there? South Breeze. Yes, how conveniently named, no? A south breeze, but only for the chosen ones. Uh, there is no equality in the world, that's for sure. It never was and it never will, unfortunately. But I think we have to strive towards it. We have to, to struggle somehow to an extent. I feel maybe this does not belong to him, but this is vulgar and commercial. But his architecture is not vulgar and commercial. And... Uh, he is a good architect. Uh, it's just that uh, the mundanity, the mundane aspects of, of practicing architecture probably are, 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 they are difficult to escape. And uh, if you want to build, if you don't want to build, then yes, you can be a purist, you know, in your own room, dreaming about a better world, but being unable to build. Um, which might not be bad, actually, you know. Uh, I remember what Leon, Leon Creer said uh, some years ago, well, at the end of the 20th century, he said, I am an architect, therefore I do not build. But I feel this statement is, is perverse, because I do believe uh, uh, that, that an architect, uh, uh, you know, it, it is only normal to attempt to build and to confront your vision, your drawings, your model, uh, uh, your intellectual construct with the realities of a, of a built, uh, built work. Unfortunately, that built work is against, um, you know, it's not serving the climate change. I mean, it is serving the climate change, unfortunately, and it is not a very sustainable enterprise. So it is a dilemma today, and it is for me as well, and I'm sure for you, you know, what should we do? You know, we are architects. Should we continue to cover the earth with concrete uh, structures or, uh, you know, maybe some other kinds of structures, taller and taller, wider and wider, and so on? Should we? Is it what we need, truly? Anyway, now this is a good building, but for a, for a you know, a famous... Uh, uh, company, uh, I, I forgot where, in Thailand, I think. It's a good uh, architecture, but it is an architecture that celebra celebrates, um, you know, the, the rhetorical uh, um, accomplishments of uh, high capitalism. Uh, here we see considered as one of the largest developers in Malaysia. So no Thailand, Malaysia, the new large venture Setia Alam is located in the Shang Alam area, southwest of Kuala Lumpur. In this approximately 5,000 acres of new city, uh, this company decided to build their own headquarters. Uh, this developed the idea for a very formal design approach to emphasize on the social commitment of this company 
to contribute in the national development of Malaysia through their edifice in this new city. Further to that, this headquarter has been designed as a green building and achieved first ever private com commercial building in Malaysia, green buildings, platinum certification. I don't know very well, but I could imagine what that platinum certification is. This is the building. It is a good building. It is well done. It is mainstream. This is a mainstream architecture. It's true. But somehow, my heart is closer, more affectionate to that almost deserted and, uh, you know, with spots of darkness, a brick building by his predecessor, um, Islam. This, this building, uh, indeed, it is civilized, it is clean, it is functioning, it is, uh, uh, it is refined, but somehow I feel it is lying. You know, uh, I mean, these real estate developers, what do they do? We know very well what they do. They make money. That's what they are interested in. And then, of course, they need the cultural appearance, you know, the cultural fascia. They need a facade because uh, as someone had told me uh, kind of amusingly, artists always talk about money and bankers always talk about painting or art. Why? Because we're, we always talk about what we don't have. Artists don't have money, so they talk about money. And bankers don't have culture or don't have art, so they talk about art. Here we have a company that is almost surely, unscrupulously uh, devoted to uh, financial transactions, uh, need uh, a cultural uh, effigy, a cultural uh, symbol of the uh, humanism and, uh, and so on. But I, I feel there is demagogy here, as far as I know uh, a little about uh, what real estate means and the so-called developers. I mean, these developers do, don't, do not build for the poor. These developers build for the rich. And uh, yeah. That's, that's, how, that's how they are able to build this glorious building. I am not contesting the qualities, architectural qualities of the building. I am a little bit hesitant to applaud its uh, morals or its ethics. Uh, you know, look on the right, we have, it seems to be a, you know, a thin uh, water curtain. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, these are, these are things that are done uh, with uh, expenditures. And look at these columns. You know, they are beautifully executed. They are clean. It's, it's a fine concrete. They support a great slab. Uh, and through that hole in the great slab, God enters the, the, the building uh, ornated with uh, financial transactions. So everything is fine. It's a perfect world. Otherwise, yes, the building is... Uh, you know, it's, it's well done in its kind of uh, commercial way. Uh, but but, but uh, if we begin to investigate further what is behind this glory, um, you know, we, we might have, or I might have some question marks. But the skill of the architect is, uh, is, uh, is here for all to see. I like nature. I love nature. I mean, when I look this, I, I become less uh, less hesitant and I become more joyous because uh, I, I think he does have a skill. Again, I don't know. Maybe I imagine he uses some landscape architect, but the decision is his as well. Uh, I think the way he brings uh, vegetation in the proximity of his, of his buildings is uh, is an inspired one most of the time, even here in the case of a, an institutional, you know, corporate uh, building, a headquarters, nothing else. But this field almost makes me, uh, you know, dream of, of running through it and maybe playing with a balloon, being a childlike and uh, totally uh, unworried about, um, you know, social discrepancies and so on. Uh, those social discrepancies do exist. I still think he does is not as equally skillful in the way he handles water. The intention is good, but it's too simplistic, you know, to create this sea of water 
geometrized by, by, uh, by the limits of, of, of the pool. This is a sketch, uh, an initial sketch. And now we go to another uh, building, Southwater Carriz. Uh, it's, uh, it's a residential building, uh, block of flats, where again, I like the way he, uh, he brings the vegetation in. I, I, I am not going to read this. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't like to read text. Um, it could be boring and then, uh, but we, we look at the pictures and I will improvise some, some, some thoughts and, and words. And, uh, but you don't even need my words because looking at the pictures, uh, you can understand in a way what the building is about. It's, uh, you know, a, a building that doesn't seem to have uh, too many restrictions in terms of space. Uh, these are apartments for, uh, for people who, uh, you know, uh, don't have a very limited budget uh, and, uh, you know, it's a good building, but, uh, and it is good, yes, in this respect, I, I, I do agree with him that, that he does make the attempt to bring the vegetation, to bring the, gre the green, to bring nature uh, in, in inside the house almost. Otherwise, the spaces are kind of uh, ceremonial and cold even. You know, I mean, this looks like uh, almost like an office, you know, a conference table with all those identical black chairs around it. Um, but you see again the beauty of nature, the beauty of this uh, thin, uh, um, you know, tree and uh, I truly think the more we bring nature to our uh, built work, the better. Uh, and if we restrain a little bit our architectures, you know, make the rooms a little bit smaller and make more room for, for nature, it will be even better. Because I don't think we have too many reasons to be so glorious, glo gloriously emphasizing uh, man as the, uh, as the measure of all things because we are destroying the earth is known. And we are also destroying ourselves. And maybe even the pandemic is some kind of a consequence of our excesses. But uh, he had the skill and the sensitivity to, 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 to have these, these trees. Uh, and I am so happy he didn't cut that tree down and uh, allowed it to, to, to be there you know, almost in the middle of the, of, the, of the path. By the way of this, I don't know if you know, at Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright, there is a, a beam that it was just a pergola, and, but there is a beam that was also almost uh, hitting a very slender tree. It was going right towards it, and Wright decided to go around it and save that very slender uh, tree a young tree, very slender, in a huge forest, because the falling water, as you know, is, is built in a forest. So someone less sensitive would have cut down that, that so-called damn little tree. That was not right. Right, in fact, it's a beautiful example of what a great architect understood by, you know, the importance of nature, to not cut down even uh, you know, uh, uh, so-called insignificant tree. There are no such things as insignificant trees. It's a really a very fine example that an architect and not in our time when we are, as you know, confronted with the serious uh, crisis, uh, climate change, the rising level of the seas, the pollution and so on. In the 19th century or early 20th century, uh, the United States, the Midwest, well, this was in Pennsylvania, sorry, uh, the falling water, but the same uh, was a different time and a different context. And still, Frank Lloyd Wright didn't cut down that tree. I'll, uh, I have that image somewhere and I, I, can, I can show it to you or you can find it yourself. But it's very beautiful, again, that this architect from Bangladesh uh, allows uh, so-called uh, wild nature to manifest herself, uh, even um, you know, in the context of a building that uh, otherwise is celebrating uh, to uh, 
significant extent uh, the position of a human being in a, in a world dominated by that human being dominated but not completely exactly because of this uh, uh, this um, greenness that he brings uh, into the building or in the proximity of the building The more green, the better. This is my opinion. Period. Okay, we move forward. Um, uh, the sketch you see is a little bit, he changed, you know, uh, architecture, the practice of architecture uh, changes one. You saw that very sensitive and poetical sketch at the beginning. Now we see he almost the angst of the architect who tries to accommodate functions. He tries to disrupt those functions with a green, as we can see, but he uses, he doesn't use, he seems to use uh, markers, not, uh, you know, uh, pen with a rib or uh, I don't know uh, what he used, uh, you know, some kind of a traditional, uh, uh, you know, tool or technique. And now he uses markers, and the markers are not very, you know, they are, they are a little prosaic. And uh, I mean, look at that blue. Gone is the sensitiveness of the of the of the of the sketch at the beginning. Now we see the, you know, the the so-called common architect uh, drawing quickly a, a sketch, a room with the doors, and uh, you know some. Uh, approximations of, of trees. If you compare this sketch with the uh, sketches and drawings of Frank Lloyd Wright, you see two architects completely different. The drawings of Frank Lloyd Wright are very, very sensitive and very, very skillfully uh, drawn with colored pencils. And I don't think Wright would have never drawn the trees like this, where you see the word road. Uh, or uh, I don't think you would have ever made uh, uh, the lake to, to symbolize it graphically or to represent it graphically in that brutal uh, blue, uh, blue, blue way. But this is uh, an architect from the present who is in a rush to build quickly another building and earn more commissions and uh, probably skeptical about the sensitivity of his clients forgetting in the process his own sensitivity. This is what I'm afraid. Uh, because initially I saw something very different. Uh, but what can we do? I mean, yes, we could do something. Maybe we can learn. And that's why I think it's so important to study the very important architects. And I refer to Frank Lloyd Wright because he was a very important architect. He was not always right. That's why his students and his um, you know, employees uh, uh, sometimes called him uh, Frank Lloyd wrong, not Frank Lloyd right, because he was not always right, of course, but his drawings are beautiful. Um, anyway, this architect has qualities. You see, he's uh, playing with those uh, small, uh, um, you know, uh, oasis of, of green, little courtyards and uh, yeah, but, um, I, I, the latest uh, sketches I saw by him, I don't like. 